Well, it is the top of the hour and we are gonna get rolling with a short video because we love video um, to get you into the Zoom mode. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Just keen to have a chat about where we are, the situation at the moment. Uh, I think you're both there. <laughs> Olive, hi, thanks for joining us. Um, Mabel, you are connected, but you need to start your, start your video. It's down at the bottom of the screen, a, a little, it's a camera. It looks like a biscuit. If you just nudge it with your nose, you should. There we are. You don't have to be so close to get, you want to move back a bit. All right, thanks. Right, so basically an update as to where we are. I can see you both look, um, worried but the good news from head office is that neither of you is going to be furloughed but we have to try and repay that loyalty uh, with some of our own i know that's supposed to be a, a strength of yours um so what we're looking for what management are looking for are ideas sorry mabel this is one of the things that we have to address the lack of focus at times because uh, well, there's the inappropriate stuff with Kevin the Doberman from accounts as well but one thing at a time so there are things that we have to try and improve on well, I'm uncomfortable with the chat as well. But Mabel, you've switched off the camera again. Can you switch it back on? You switch the video? Right, there we are. Okay, the annual report. Uh, you've pretty much ruined the sofas. Uh, 913 squirrels chase none caught, so not a good return. Uh, so again, things to... Sorry, Mabel, if you're going to do that, could you just switch off the video function again <laughs> so we don't have to see it? Right. Right, while Mabel's away, Olive, uh, good news. You will be receiving a small bonus for slightly better behaviour. Okay, Mabel, I'm gonna, we'll have a chat in a minute. I'm gonna put you on mute so I can talk to Olive. Right, Olive, I've got a message from management, which I have to read out. You're a good dog. Yes, you are. Who's a good dog? You're a good dog. Oh, I'm glad it makes you happy. Okay, well, you just keep, keep up the good work and thanks for joining us. And I'll see you on a walk. Right, Mabel, so if you could just take a bit of an example from Olive and follow her lead. Are you falling asleep while we're having this chat? This is all part of the problem that we've, we've got to sort. She's gone. She's gone. Unbelievable. We should sack her. We should definitely sack her. She didn't get such good results. <laughs> so I just want to welcome you to this meeting today and introduce myself. I'm Laura Garfield. I'm co-founder of Idea to Cancer and I am here in Kansas City. And I'm Sharon Gatula, the other half of Idea to Cancer. I'm based in Seattle. And we're so glad you guys are here with us today. So what is your biggest Zoom issue? Welcome to our quick meeting today where we'll be doling out our tricks and answering your questions. Because of all that's happened with COVID-19, we can't do business as usual anymore. For us at Idea to Cantor, that means we're not flying all over the country shooting for our clients. We're using a remote platform. And for you as an advisor, that means your clients aren't coming into your office and you're not meeting them at restaurants or going to their homes. And it might be a while before those kind of meetings resume. In fact, you might be considering whether virtual meetings will permanently replace some of those in-person meetings. And that is why we are here. We want to not just help you with your relationships with your current clients, but get you positioned for growth. So I want to ask you, what's holding you back? Is it that you are afraid you'll make a mistake on a Zoom meeting? Something will go wrong? That you'll it look like you don't know what you're doing or that you lack knowledge or experience? But on the other hand, you don't want to miss that opportunity. Well, we're not going to let you miss it. By the way, this session today is brought to you by the Women's Leadership Alliance. For those of you that aren't familiar with the WLA, they are on a mission to attract more women into the financial services industry. Right now, though, the group is hyper-focused on giving advisors like you who are already in the business the support you need not just to survive this, but to thrive. We'd like to thank the WLA for joining or for inviting us um, to share with you today. So we're gonna cover some Zoom tips and tricks, whether you've used Zoom a lot or have been hesitant to dive in, there will be tips you can use. But we're gonna start with some on-camera basics that we teach our clients um, for video. And we're gonna have some time later for some Q&A, but if you have a question along the way, you can type it into the chat and we'll try to give you an answer as we go along or we'll get it covered in the end. 
So let's kick this off with looking good on camera. Speaking of, Sharon, as usual, your lighting looks fantastic. I thank you. I think 20 years in the photo industry should at least get me that far. <laughs> Um, thanks so much for joining us all, and thanks, Michelle, for inviting us to do this. Um, well, one of the th <laughs> so we're here to talk about presenting with confidence, whether it's video or a Zoom meeting. I feel like it all boils down to kind of the same thing. And even though we're working from our homes, you know, sometimes we get maybe a little too cozy in our PJs. And I find, at least for me, that when I work from home till three o'clock and I notice, hey, I'm still in my bathrobe, like I feel a little lazy, a little like I'm gonna have Cheetos for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm getting ready for a meeting, like I still find if I dress nicely, it gives me a boost of energy. It makes me feel professional. It makes me feel like I have value and I deserve to be talking about something. Now, granted, sometimes, if I can get this, it's only from the waist up. So just like video, a couple of key things that we say is solid colors rock, right? You can't go wrong with a solid color. You always look classic. You're not going to clash with anything. Um, but for Zoom meetings, one of the things I see is people like blending into the background. Like, so today I picked a bright red top and a gray shirt because I've got this dark wood background behind me. Most days I'm in black or gray and I just sort of blend in. And if that's not lit, I'm just a floating head sitting in space. So, um, another thing, of course, is like you want to be comfortable, but you're also people are trusting you with their financial decisions. So, you need to still look that part. So, at least from the waist up, stay professional. Now, mention, Laura mentioned earlier lighting. And of course, like I've been a photographer my whole life. So, lighting is my thing. You might have seen our little lighting for Zoom meetings video that we released a couple of weeks ago. And so I grabbed some stills. We see this all the time, people sitting in front of a bright window and all you see is the silhouette. You can't see their face. If people can't see you, I think it's hard to connect. People wanna see your eyes. And then of course, if you're sitting at your dining room table or under canned lighting, you get the lovely bright halo of the forehead look. Um, just like photography, lighting from the front, lighting from offside, just lights up your face. People can see your eyes, they can see your emotions, they can connect much better. If you don't have any options, maybe you're in the basement, you can buy these little webcams with a ring light that will help light your face. Some cheap, what, cheap solutions that you have right now is to just turn up your laptop monitor all the way up. Another thing, of course, is a big window, which is what, well, if it wasn't gray and rainy in Seattle today, I would be using. And then you've all seen this in your Zoom meetings, the person where you're looking up at the ceiling, maybe seeing barely part of their heads, maybe it's a nostril shot. I know some PCs <laughs> actually have the camera at the lower right-hand corner of the monitor, like how helpful is that? Not at all. <laughs> I have a stand-up desk that's electric, so I can go up and down and I can get my camera wherever I need it to be. But if you don't have that luxury, a couple of books, an Amazon box maybe, you lift up your laptop, you want to get that camera right at eye level. And speaking of cameras, you probably have a little green or red dot. When you're talking and trying to make your point, you want to look right at that dot. And then people will think you're looking right at them, only them and you'll get your message across. And then audio. Your computer audio will work, of course, but your computer audio is going to pick up every sound in the room and it can sound echoey. I'm using just a headset mic that came with an iPad, I think. As long as you've got that little micro jack that plugs into your camera, it works just fine. A more high-end option is getting one of these podcast mics. It'll set you back about $80. It's got a USB input. Um, the only caveat is if it's on the desk and you bang your desk, you're going to hear that in the microphone. So you just have to make sure you're not smacking your desk around. Uh, when you go into, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen and under the audio, 
settings, you have a selection of what audio you want. So if you're using a headset, whether it's wireless or plugged in, you have an option for the audio of your the audio settings for the computer or for whatever microphone you've got plugged in at the time. So now we've talked about the on-camera audio and video tips. We want to talk to you about the under the hood settings of Zoom and get you a little more comfortable so that you feel like you want to add some of these to your next meeting. If you are already there, virtual events like seminars and book clubs are going to be a tool that you should start using for your business. So let's dive in. Because you're planners, I'm sure you'll love my first tip. It is to get prepared for your online meeting. What that looks like is prepare the same way that you would for a live event. If you're going to be standing on stage presenting, um, actually run through your presentation. If you're adding in different elements, you're pitching back and forth. Sharon and I practiced this four times before we brought it live to you. Um, practice makes perfect but I'm not promising this is going to be perfect. Also, if you're leaving time for Q&A, it is nice to go ahead and plan some questions ahead of time, just in case your audience doesn't give you any questions. Um, and then as you're getting ready, it's a good idea to close all of the apps on your desktop so that you have the most power and RAM processing. I use Microsoft Word a lot. Um, it's a memory suck. Shut those things down. Um, setting expectations for clients is easy with Zoom because they auto-generate emails. They let them know what to do and when to do it. They also get reminders. But I think it's a nice um, extra touch point to send out your own email or have someone on your team send it out to let your clients or prospects know what to expect from the meeting um, and even how to get in if they haven't used Zoom before. Then getting started, it's nice to set the tone to greet participants as they enter the room. Sharon and I are on different pages on this one. Um, Sharon says she hates it when you're already in mid-presentation mode and your presenters greeting people as they enter. I don't know. I think that um, letting people know that um, you see them and that they're there and you're happy to have them there, it's like greeting them at the front door of your house or the front door of your office. Then let's get into the standard meeting settings that I use when I'm setting up something like this event. First, you should know that Zoom standard is meeting mode. That's what we're using now. Um, there is an upgrade option for webinar mode. What webinar mode does is allow you to have more participants. Up to 10,000 people can join you on webinar mode. If you have 10,000 people who are coming, yay for you. Um, I like to click the box for registration required, especially if you're doing some sort of seminar. This is really helpful so you can follow up. There's a checkbox you can choose for display names while you're setting up your meeting. I think that one is also nice. So if not everybody knows each other, you can kind of put a, a name with a face. Um, sort of like wearing a name tag at a cocktail party. I also often check the box for require video to be on as people join. Um, meetings are more engaging when we can see each other's faces. It, there tends to be more interaction. As even if you do check that box, as people enter, they always have the option individually to choose whether they want to use their video or not. Um, so don't feel like you're forcing someone who knows that they're going to have a nine-year-old walk in carrying her bunny and a 12-year-old coming in with his Chromebook asking for help with his math homework. Um, so people always have that option. And then when it comes to muting and unmuting, um, you have all of the, that control. Um, but in, when I'm setting up a meeting, I do check the box for mute them when they enter. And so people have the chance to choose if they feel like they're in a quiet situation and they can have their mic open. So anybody out there who's on this meeting, who if you feel like you're in your quiet office and would like to open your mic, please do that. Um, or if you're, if you've dialed in on the phone, I see a couple of people have joined on the phone, you feel free to unmute yourself. Um, 
and join in. So one thing you should know while you're running the meeting, um, you do have the opportunity to turn people's mics on and off. So Danielle turned her own mic on, but if I wanted to turn her off, I could just cover my mouth over Danielle's picture and choose turn her mic off, which I'm not going to do, Danielle. Um, and then there's a handy hack that I think is post-it post note worthy. Um, as the meeting host, you can mute everyone on Zoom all at once. If you're a PC user, that command is Alt-M. If you are a Mac user, it is Command-Control-M. Everyone got a chance to write that down? <laughs> Alt-M. <laughs> what, do, what does that do again? It, it mutes, mutes the whole crowd at once. Oh, it mutes everybody, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so you probably have been on Zoom meetings like this one where there's a presentation and there are a couple of extra steps that you need to do when you're going into screen share mode if you want to share some media. So here we've got a video that we set up, but if I just played it without going in to share my computer audio, you wouldn't hear it. So when you, if you clicked on screen sharing, a pop-up box comes up and we're gonna show it to you actually a little later in this presentation exactly where it is. And there is a check mark that you need to click so that the video will have on. It's really at night or early in the morning when I first get up and I go, oh my God, this is still going on. And there sometimes will be a little mute button on the actual video timeline, especially if it's coming in from YouTube. So you wanna make sure that that is checked on. And once you check it on when you're in the meeting, it's on for the whole time, which is handy. So you can go in and make sure everything's working before your presentation, and then you don't have to worry about it when you go back to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on the back end of Zoom, there are I don't know, a zillion different check marks in boxes for you to check when you're setting up your meeting. And we picked six that we thought were super effective and super handy um, out of the whole slew. Let me just, thank you. So Laura's gonna go into the back end of Zoom here and show you what it looks like. Yeah, you're looking at our Idea Decanter profile in Zoom, but the place you find all of these settings is if you look at the left down under admin, if you click down on account management and into account settings, you will see, let me scroll for you here, about <laughs> so a gazillion things you can turn on and off for your meeting. So the six that we chose that we thought were probably the most useful for everybody is uh, number one, upcoming meeting reminders. I mean, who doesn't love an AI assistant to help you so that you don't forget to remind everyone that your meeting's coming up? There it is. There. And then of course the chat feature. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, there's a little chat bubble. And if you go in there, you can send messages to everybody on the, on the webinar or you can direct message people. If you go down where the chat button is, you'll see there's an everyone button and then there's a little drop down arrow and you can pick specific people if you want to message them privately. And then there's the co-host button, which we selected for this so that Laura and I can switch controls and I've been admitting people in while she's been speaking. And then Laura's a big fan of the polling button. Laura, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I don't know if any of you have been in a meeting before where you get to do a poll, but as your host, I have set up a poll for you to take. So I'm going to launch it and please, this is a one question poll. Everybody weigh in on your answer. I'll give you 15 seconds to choose. Five seconds, four, <laughs> three, two, no pressure. one, up 66% of you have voted 70%, three more seconds. Okay, we'll end <laughs> the poll here. And then there's a button where I can share the results. 
it looks like most people just like being able to see other people's faces. So back to our tip on check that box to require those videos to be on. And as the host, there's a stop share the poll at the bottom. Something else that and you And then you have to manually yourself take the poll off, or at least I had to. So there's another option down at the bottom at the, as the host if you set it up for breakout rooms. I'm assuming some of you have been in break, breakout rooms before, but as your host, we just click on breakout rooms and I chose automatically. There are gonna be four of you sent to a room. While, when you get there, please introduce yourself, tell where you're from and um, share your favorite Zoom hack in two sentences or less. You'll get a 60 second warning that you're coming back to the main meeting. So let me send you into breakout rooms. So if you have an experience, you can experience it. And if you have, you can at least meet three other people on the meeting. Here you go. Hi there. Everybody back? Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Hi, Kim Waldman. It's good to know that you're on the call today. So before we go to the next hack, I wanted to answer a quick question for the group. Um, to get to the settings for Zoom, um, when you're setting up your meeting, you go to, I'm going to do a quick screen share and recap. You go to your Zoom account and log in, and then what you're looking for is um, your menu on the left. You'll go down to admin and then um, settings, and then you should be able to set it all up. Oh, here it is. So. On the left, so your choices are personal and admin, go to account management, and then click on account settings. And that's where all these fun things live. All right, so you might see down at the bottom of your screen, you should see, there's a reactions button. And this is a great way if you just want to take like a quick poll, if you click on it, there's like a thumbs up or there is a congratulations. We've been a lot of Zoom meetings where people just use this for like um, a raise the hand feature. Like if you want to speak and have a question, you can use that and then we can turn on your mic and you can ask the question that way and add some interactivity to your meeting without everybody speaking at the same time. And then Zoom has just a great screen share function. And let me screen share for these behind the scene. What Sharon's setting up is a screen cap we did of what you see as the presenter. And so you're gonna be able to see what the kind of controls look like. All right, so as a presenter, you can see there's so many more options than what you have as a participant. And so in the screen sharing button here, but you've got the polling, you can record, there's the breakout rooms. Participants is here so that you can add people in as they come in. But when you get to the screen share, you get this pop-up button like this. Now, everything that's open on your laptop plus the desktop is available to you. And you also have an option of this whiteboard, but unless you have some kind of pen, I'm not sure, like I tried it on my trackpad. I can't draw on my trackpad. It just looks like nothing but that is an option. And I believe there's a text function as well if you wanted to type on a whiteboard. But as you can see, anything you have open, including like maybe your private messages, is available. And if you click the wrong thing, then you've shared the world, everything with you. If you look down here at the bottom left-hand corner, it says share computer sound. Now that is the button that I checked so that you could hear Margaret's video. And of course, 
Mabel and Olive earlier. And then you can also optimize the screen share for video clip. And I think that brings it into HD mode for you. I didn't click it for here because I didn't want to have anything stuttering out with the internet connection. So we've taught you some of our basic settings and we have given you some advanced settings that you may or may not um, be using right now. It's always a great idea to practice again before you go live with something. Um, so you just feel more fluid with switching back and forth between different screens and trying different things. Um, we'd love to answer your questions. If you have any right now, feel free to um, type them into the chat or hover over your own picture and you can unmute yourself and um, fire away. I have a question, Laura, about um, the Zoom bombers that you hear a lot about. I've seen stories on the news over the last couple of days about a graduation ceremony being interrupted, and book clubs and things like that. Is there anything that a presenter can do to try to um, protect uh, you know, themselves from that type of hacking? So setting up the security settings as a checkmark box is a good idea. That is, as you're setting up your meeting, you can require a pin to get in. Um, as the host, you can always eject um, a user too. You can um, kick them out of the meeting. So you can be prepared to do that if need be. I know um, Zoom has been going through a lot of security um, changes and you've probably gotten the message that at the end of May, you need to have your Zoom updated. Um, so I think Zoom is doing some things on the back end to keep the Zoom bombers out also. Sharon, did you wanna finish up? Well, I've got a couple of questions through the chat that I was gonna answer. Um, how to get a static picture of yourself like Amanda did. Uh, I think when you set up your Zoom account, you have an option of putting a photo in or you can drag it in from Gmail. So if you turn off your video function, then a picture comes up. And splitting into breakout groups is super easy. It will, you can just automatically choose how many people you want in the group, or you can go in and choose specific teams. Like if you're working on team projects and you know the teams in advance, you can select them and put them into the groups that way. But otherwise it just randomly picks people for you. One other popular question that I heard a lot on a recent Zoom meeting I was on about Zoom, it's very meta, <laughs> a Zoom about Zoom, which is what we're doing right now, um, was how to do the virtual backgrounds. There are a ton out there that you can download. There are a couple that come with um, Zoom, but if you hover over the video button at the bottom and there's a little up arrow, you can get to choose virtual background. Um, when you click on that, you'll get some options um, and you can just go out and choose something you want behind you. I was on a call yesterday with a guy who had a beautiful shot of a vineyard in Napa and it made me wish I was there <sighs> and not in Kansas City, but here we are. Well, personally, I think the more useful tip in the video settings is the to touch up my appearance settings so that if you're feeling Ooh. a little tired, like uh, 8 a.m. on a Pacific Coast time, you can- I love, I love yours, Marcy, with the, the palm tree flowing in the background. Oh, nice. <laughs> if, yeah, that's great. If you, if you guys can't see it, click on gallery view. It's in the top right corner of your black screen and go to gallery view and you'll see Marcy, um, Marcy, yeah. Smiling face on a beach in Hawaii, maybe. <laughs> and Amanda, what city are you in? It looks like Times Square. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At the NASDAQ. There you go. Oh. At the NASDAQ. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay. Um, guys, I have a question. Um, and it's great to see your faces. Hi, Laura. Uh, Hi, Laura. Hey there. So a couple of quick things. Number one, when you say register, when, when you want to require registration, is that when you invite people and they mm -hmm. register in advance or when they go to yeah. log in that they have to enter their name, phone number, et cetera. Yeah, so it's when you invite, what happens is if you check that box as you're setting up the meeting, if you check that box, they're going to be required to register. 
So just like for this meeting, you get a URL afterwards, a link that you can share with anyone, but instead of actually being able to just come straight into the meeting, they have to, when they click that, they have to register. So some of you registered just a few minutes before the meeting and you pretty much just come straight in, but some of you registered on Monday and you get emails letting you know you're registered, here's your link to get in. But okay, yeah, another check. Look. Okay, thank you. Um, another quick question. So let's say we're doing a webinar and we wanna send a replay to clients, which is what I did on Tuesday. And you wanna, mm -hmm. let's say, um, have it live at a place on the website. For mm -hmm. example, if someone hired you amazing women to shoot a video for your <laughs> website, for example, um, and let's say, you know, I want to put a, 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 um, the video on there. Do you know anything about like how long it'll live there? Like I was told um, that if you put, let's say the replay link there, it would only store it in the cloud for 90 days. And there's another way to have a Zoom meeting live forever on your website. Do you know anything about that? So when you're setting up the meeting, there is another box you can check to record the meeting. I did that when I yes. set this up. And so when I logged in, it was automatically recording and it's going to record till the end. What happens is you have a chunk at the beginning you're going to want to edit off and a chunk at the end. Um, but when you do that and you close the meeting, Zoom will automatically start downloading it for you to your mm -hmm. computer. And so you have that file. So as opposed to sharing a file of it living online somewhere, um, if you are hosting content on YouTube and routing it through your website um, with an embed code, then that will live as long as you want it to live. Um, if you're sending it directly to, let's say, a, the marketing team that's uploading it um, to your website for you, it's gonna be embedded into your website and actually live in there. That will live as long as it can. I don't know how long the actual Zoom living in the cloud, but grab that file. It's, it's going to be a chunky file. They're hard to transfer. If you're using Box or Dropbox, those are good choices. If you're uploading, if you're hosting, like using um, YouTube as a host. Is there something you want to add, Sharon? Well, I was just going to say, because the file's so big and, you know, the quality doesn't have to be like amazing. It's a Zoom meeting, right? You can use a free app called Handbrake and you can download that onto your computer and it will compress the file down to a more manageable size because a 30 minute video is going to be a couple of gigabytes and it's going to be hard to transfer. So that is one pro tip for you from me. So you, you get it from Zoom, like... It just downloads to the Zoom? computer, right, Laura? Yeah, What's the it name? Just, uh, Zoom automatically what? starts downloading it to your computer if you click the record beforehand. And What's Handbrake is just a free app. What's so the name? Download the Handbrake. Handbrake. So what do you do? You finish, you have to check the record box, of course, before the webinar. And then what happens after? It automatically will launch into downloading the file. Into Handbrake. Nope, no, into your no. computer. And then you also have to download Handbrake to do what Sharon was just saying. Yeah, Handbrake is just um, an easy way to change the compression of the file so that you can downsize them to more manageable sizes. I use it all the time for clients, like for background videos. Right. So it would, so after it would automatically, you record it automatically, it automatically downloads to the computer. Then you can use Handbrake and then we would send it to our marketing people to get it on the website. Exactly. And can, you were mentioning something edit, you can edit part of your Zoom meeting. Yeah, so for example, yeah. Sharon and I got into this call 15 minutes before it started, and that's when the recording started. Sharing it out, I want to start it at, I want to cut that first 15 minutes off. And Zoom will let you do that? No, you'll need to edit it somehow. So if you put it up in YouTube, you can edit it there, or if you've got iMovie or Windows Video Player, or I don't know, there's a whole bunch of free video editing apps online nowadays. Um, that you can just cut the ends off. Okay, thanks guys. Sure thing. Another option, Laura, is if you don't wanna tackle the editing as a host, if you enable in those meeting settings, if you enable record, um, but don't choose it when you're setting up the actual meeting, you'll have record in your little dashboard at the bottom yeah. and you can start recording whenever you want and that will eliminate the need for you to do any um, chopping off of the beginning and the end. Yeah, that's what we did. We did our first one on Tuesday, so.
figuring it out. Good. Good. It's great. Um, there was a question on chat about from Judy about breakout rooms. We didn't talk about that, did we? Um, I talked about it briefly. About Just how the button at the bottom. Yeah. Easy to answer. Anybody else have questions? Feel free to open your mic. Hi, this is Perry Gibbons. Whenever um, you are hosting a meeting, is there a time limit involved? That is a great. If question. you're using the free, if you're using the free one, I believe it caps at forty-five minutes. If okay. you have a paid, then I think you could go all day. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, and another question um, I had was when you are um, allowing people into the meeting um, or not, depending on what your option is, um, is that where you can also, I guess, if they registered for the meeting then you can accept them in or not? Like if somebody tried to break in or come in unannounced? You That's know, one way to this... keep people out. Usually if people are joining and you're already launched into your meeting, it would probably be hard to like know who, especially if you're hosting a meeting and you don't know by name all of the people who are gonna be joining, um, it, it would probably be hard to know. The waiting room is an option that you, select when you're setting up the meeting though. So you can set your meeting up so people come directly in. They can even get in before the host gets in, or you can set it up with a waiting room, which is the way we did it here. The complication with the waiting room is, you know, needing to keep like one eye on admitting people in as you go. Um, and it can get, if it's just you running the meeting, you can be mid thought and not really notice that people are sitting there. I was joining a meeting on Monday and I sat there for about five minutes and before somebody noticed that I was waiting to get in. Great, thank Good you. Good question. All right, well, we have taken up a lot of your time today. Um, I want you to know that if you have follow-up questions that pop up for you, you are, certainly welcome to email me. Uh, this is my email on screen, laura at ideatocanter.com. And we would like to give one last shout out to the WLA for hosting. You can find out more about the WLA's mission at womensleadalliance.org. Um, we'd also like to tell you about myadvisorpath.com. It's the WLA's recently launched website targeting young women who might be considering a path to financial advising, not just young women really. There's information there for college age women who might be considering a career, opening their eyes to the past, and also for mid-career changers, women who have started another career and um, might be interested in coming over. It's a great interactive resource and we'd love for you to check it out and help us spread the word about my advisor path. And one last tip, a nice way to end a meeting is to ask everybody to click gallery mode. So if you're not already in gallery mode, hover on the top right corner of your screen and click gallery mode. As your host, I am going to unmute you all. All your mics are going to be opened up. And I just wanna thank you for joining us and say goodbye. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good weekend.